Truth, honor, freedom, and courtesy. These are the values Rodine School is built on. For more than a century, these values have underpinned an education of excellence for the girls and young women we teach. Rodine is an all-girls school from grades 0 to 12 with a richly diverse student body. Our unchanging mission is to empower young women for the future of work and the world and to inspire them to lead lives of significance. We are fully invested in this country and our girls' future. We want them to grow into emotionally intelligent leaders who are resilient and compassionate, who celebrate and embrace diversity. From the day they enter the foundation phase through our magical fairy gardens, the girls learn and grow through meaningful classroom interaction in a stimulating, nurturing environment. In the Upper Junior School, we empower each girl to be the best she can be through academics, sports, music, arts, and culture. We also emphasize mental and emotional well being, teaching each girl to identify, own, and manage her emotions. At senior school level, we encourage every girl to live up to her own unique potential and develop her interests, talents, and passions. We focus on leadership and responsible global citizenship through partnerships with organizations like the Global Round Square Association and the President's Award Youth Empowerment Program. We have invested in excellence in mathematics, the sciences and IT, and our 21st century curriculum aims to produce creative, critical and ethical thinkers who will be equipped to thrive in the rapidly changing world of the future. Our extracurricular programs nurture a wide variety of talents and interests. We offer a broad range of sports in outstanding facilities, from aquatics to rock climbing. Our cultural activities include public speaking, drama, debating, music, art and design. Active social responsibility is also fundamental to the school's ethos, and we partner with organizations where the girls can be actively involved in community work. Since 2009, every year the Rodine Academy has tutored 100 girls from an under-resourced neighboring high school. Our grade 11 students also volunteer at a residential women's health empowerment program in a remote Limpopo village. Our girls are accepted into top local and international universities. And we are proud of our alumni who lead lives of significance in the arts, sciences, medicine, engineering, politics, academia, and commerce. Their success is our success and is testament to the nurturing, values-based, holistic education they receive at Rodine School. Good evening. A very warm welcome to this online event. I hope you enjoyed that short video introduction to Rodine. My name is Fiona Rogers and I am the executive head of Rodine School. In pre-COVID times, we would have welcomed you to our beautiful campus and we would have shown it to you with great pride. While we would have preferred to host everyone in person and address you face to face, we are nonetheless grateful that we're able to address you this evening through a live event in a manner that safeguards everyone's health. And we hope it will allow you to develop a meaningful picture of life at Rodine. That is certainly our aim. Please know that we would be delighted to host tours of our campus over the next few weeks if you would like to see it please contact Mrs. Shelver and she will set them up. And if your daughter would like to spend some time here one morning, we will be more than willing to try to arrange that for you, especially now that infection rates are falling. 
the current trend in infection rates is certainly very help hopeful. Before I start my presentation, I would like to introduce three very important people at Rodine. They are Mrs. Shuri Ajoda, Mrs. Linda Galanakis, and Mrs. Nat Anel Natali. I'm going to hand over now to them so that they can introduce themselves to you briefly. Hello, my name is Shuri and I'm the Chief Operations Officer at Rodine School. Um, I'm sure a lot of you um, have a lot of questions around joining Rodine. When I was in lower five and I needed to make that decision, I was really excited to attend Rodine and come and see the school. And I hope you get to get a good feel of what Rodine is all about in tonight's discussion. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Linda Galanakis and I'm the deputy head for curriculum. Anything to do with the academics or with the girls' subject choices, I'm your person. I've been at Rodine for just over a year now, and it has been an absolute honor and privilege working with these incredibly professional um, teachers and staff. Um, but more than that, we have got truly the most amazing girls. So um, welcome, and we look forward to seeing you hopefully very soon in real life. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and a big welcome from my side. My name is Anal Natali, and I am the Deputy for Pastoral Care at Rodine. Now, this means that I look after the well-being of the students and the staff, and I've got a big team of people, including school psychologists, um, some off-site psychologists, uh, our house mistresses, and tutors who make sure that our girls are not only academically and co-curricularly ta taken care of, but also from an emotional side, looking at their well-being and making sure that they are happy and um, enjoying their life at Rodine. So it's a real honor to meet you all, albeit on online. Uh, and I will see the girls over the next three days as they come for their assessments. So big welcome and enjoy the presentation. Thank you. It's now my privilege to introduce another three very important people. Firstly, our head girl, Tsehofatso Sebolai. Then Buikanyo Ntimani, our deputy head girl. And then Lihle Mjaku, who will hopefully be joining us. She is having a little bit of trouble uh, linking in. If necessary, we'll move her talk to later on. But I'm seriously looking forward to hearing what Sejo Fatso and Buikanyo have to say um, as they as I hand over to them. Thank you, Buikanyo and, and, and Sejo Fatso. We look forward to hearing you tell us a little bit about life at Rodine. Sejo Fatso. Yes. Good evening, parents and students. My name is Tsekho Fatosibolai. I am the head girl of Rodine for 2021. I have been at Rodine for 12 years now. And both my mother and my aunt matriculated from the school. My mother matriculated in 1991 and my aunt in 1996. 18 years later, the time came for her to look for a school for her six-year-old daughter. My father was settled on the idea of, this, of a school in four ways, while my mother had her heart, soul and mind set on the school in Parktown. My mother did go to all the open days and listen to all the speeches, but she had her heart set on the best school of all. So my dad lost the battle, as dads usually do, and my sister and I were both enrolled at Rodine. When I asked my mother about the story, she has nothing but happiness and joy to relay. I asked her once, why Rodine out of all the schools? And she said, you will find out. So today I will answer that question for all of you in three points. Point number one, Rodine will help you find your space and place in society and the world. 
At Rodin, it is important to achieve academically, but it is more important to achieve your personal best. We are expected we are, we are expected to consider the importance of our environment, our country and our role in society. Students are challenged by speakers, teachers and in most cases by other students to define, to define their space and their contribution in, to society. Because we as a community are blessed to be receiving the excellent education that we receive and that we live a comfortable lifestyle, we feel privileged to share wherever we can through our social responsibility. To have a pandemic so severe and not have been severely affected is something for which we are hugely grateful. Through our programs such as Social Responsibility and the President's Award, students who take part are exposed to new situations where they're able to assist and challenge themselves. We also have a wonderful opportunity for students to share their views and on particular subjects. We call this event CRATES. This event is facilitated by our student-led transformation committee. Crates discussions are run on a theme basis. This month, the theme is COVID-19 and the impact it had on education, on our education and the education of those around us. At Rodin, we are taught the most powerful thing, the most powerful thing we have is our voice, not only to speak for ourselves, but for others too. We are taught that our place and space in this world or society is to help. We are taught that we are equal regardless of gender, sexual orientation or social status. Point number two, Rodin values the individual and students are encouraged to explore their own identities and define themselves within a group. We are able to search through an endless list of activities and subjects to find what suits us. While finding, discovering and defining, students are encouraged to develop their ability to collaborate on the court, field and in the classroom. We are taught to collaborate with people from diverse backgrounds. Rodine teaches this through word and action. Rodine is not perfect, so we collaborate with parents, teachers and students to make an inviting environment for everyone, no matter their background. Our school tries its best to ensure the identities of the students are not lost in the similarity of the, of the uniform. Point number three, the lessons Rodin teaches reach far beyond the classroom. From learning how to log into Engage to learning about brain, about the brain and calculus, I have learned far more than my exams and tests indicate. I learned about the value of working hard and the value of defining myself. I did this through many different activities and committees I was able to immerse myself in. I learned through the long hours spent at school for house plays, the value of hard work. I learned resilience when I was not selected for a part in the inter-house dance teams. I learned that maybe dancing is not for me and that's okay. I learned to look for my purpose and ability in other areas. Rodine has taught me the value of laughing, laughing with teachers and with students. I have even learnt the value of laughing at myself. When I started in grade eight in 2017, I was a very timid and shy girl. Some of my classmates claimed to only have known I, I went to the school when we reached grade 10. I didn't believe in, the, in my ability to do anything or be anything, but through Rodin and how it challenges us, challenges us every day, I realized my potential. The lessons I learned through my experience at Rodin are different from those around me, from those who came before me, and hopefully from those who come after me. Although we wear the same uniform, attend the same classes, there is still room for you to create your experience and learn your lessons. These, lesson, these are the lessons you will take with you far beyond the white walls, classrooms, and blue dress. So when you come to Rodin, make it your space to grow. Thank you. Good evening, parents and prospective Rodin students. My name is Biganyan Zimane, and I am the Deputy Head and President of the SRC for 2021. Democracy is an incredibly important pillar here at Rodin. Students at the school are encouraged and empowered to express their own opinions learn from their peers and ultimately become informed contributing members of this community. 
The Student Representative Council, or SRC, is just one of the many ways in which students can express their opinions and contribute to solving problems within our school. The council is made up of a board of various representatives from the different parts of the school, such as sports and culturals, as well as three representatives from each grade. Every member is voted for by their peers in a democratic voting process, ensuring that the representatives are pupils who their peers believe are best fit to represent them. We have monthly meetings discussing issues brought up by students throughout the school and find the best solutions to those issues. We aim to not just be a complaints department, but rather to encourage students to propose real solutions to the problems that they come across. Having been at Rodin for four years, I have learned so much about democracy to prepare me for my role this year. I've learned that democracy is about actively listening to the opinions of all stakeholders and often setting aside your own personal agenda for the greater good. I've learned that you can never please everyone. It takes hard work and dedication to bring sustainable change. And that often, if you don't solve a problem, no one else will. Rodin is an environment in which discussing difficult issues is encouraged and learning important skills such as listening with empathy and understanding, as well as critical thinking, cultivate naturally in this environment, both in and outside of the classroom. Rodin has been a place that has allowed me to find my voice and express my opinions in a way I never could have anticipated. From being a little grade eight who feared how others would perceive her views to being who I am today, unafraid to do or say what I believe is the right thing, even if it isn't always the most pleasant thing to say or do. And that is what democracy is all about. They are difficult but incredibly important lessons like these that this incredible school has taught me. And although it may not sound like it, I do not get paid to be here, so you can trust me when I say that this comes from the heart. I truly would not be who I am today if it wasn't for Rodin. And I know that in the near future, many of you will be able to say the same. Good evening. My name is Lichem Jackal and I am head of boarding for 2021. I'd like to share a little bit about boarding. Four years ago, I was a new girl. First of all, I came to Rodin with my shirt worn the wrong side around because of a long argument I had with my mother, where my argument was, Mom, have you ever seen a shirt that's worn with the buttons at the back? And I won, so I came looking strange. I was feeling a mix of emotions about leaving my mom behind. Being away from home was both terrifying and exciting. It was a big change. Honestly, on my very first night, I literally tossed and turned the whole night. I simply missed my bed and the feeling of being at home. But in the shortest space of time, boarding became my second home. I found another family. You learn to be independent and you learn a lot about living with people and you learn a lot about people that you wouldn't even speak to if you didn't literally live together. And on top of all of that, you have so much fun. All the prep times you'll spend in the common rooms as low as chatting instead of actually working, the amazing friends that you'll make, chatting up a storm in the dining hall at dinner. But of course, things may have changed a bit because of COVID, but I'm hopeful that things will soon be go back to normal. Boarding is an amazing experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything. So I would encourage you to come to boarding and join the sisterhood and the amazing boarding family. Thank you. Thank you so much to Tsego Fatso, Buikanyo and Litle for those enlightening talks. And yes, you might have thought we paid them to do it, but I promise we didn't. They certainly gave a wonderful picture of Rodine. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your giving your time this evening, girls. <clears throat> In the next hour or so, I hope to show you reasons why Rodine has such an excellent reputation. Show you what time at Rodine would hold for your daughter and convince you that this is the right place for your daughter. At the end of the presentation, we'll have time to answer any questions you may have. 
So please feel free to put your questions into the Q&A box as you think of them. In the meantime, please sit back, make yourselves comfortable, perhaps with a cup of coffee and something to eat. And let me show you that the most popular of our rather quaint school songs is quite correct in its claim that Rodine is the best school of all. To start with, I'd like to briefly explain the admissions process. Each year we have a total of 90 places for grade eight. And those are for the girls both from the junior school and from our feeder schools. Girls from our junior school have automatic acceptance into the senior school. And we anticipate that between 40 and 45 of those girls will be coming up to the senior school next year, which means that we have 45 to 50 places that we can offer to people from our feeder schools. Your, some of, the, of your daughters will have written or will still be writing the diagnostic tests in maths and English. Now, these are used to assist in the choice, but they are not the only criterion that we use. You will, some of you will have already been taken part in the interview process. Um, and what that involves is looking for girls who will flourish in our environment, pupils who will thrive here. And, and so it's a combination of the, the test and the, the interview process and the report from her school on which we make the decision for offers. <clears throat> I will be making the offers this weekend. So please look out for a call from the Rodine phone number on Saturday or Sunday. Just a brief, a brief view of what will happen beyond her, her, her admission. In grades eight and nine, girls cover a broad spectrum of subjects because this is the general education and training phase. And it's important for them to have a broad base from which to choose their subjects for their further education and training phase, which is grades 10 to 12. And this phase culminates at the end in the writing of the National Senior Certificate under the uh, auspices of the IEB. A little bit about <clears throat> scholarships and bursaries. So we do have a number of scholarships and bursaries. We have trust merit bursaries, which are full bursaries for girls who are academically strong, but whose parents do not have the financial means to afford the fees. And here we work in partnership with the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation and with this as SSP. Um, then we also have Rodin Access Bursaries. Now these are partial bursaries for again for girls who are academically strong and who would really thrive at Rodin, but whose parents can afford to pay only part of the fees. This is a strategic initiative, which I will refer to again later. <clears throat> Both of the above are subject to means tests. And then we have some scholarships and we have three academic scholarships which provide part fees only. The writing of these examinations is by invitation only. Um, and so we look at the girls who fared best in the diagnostic tests and they will receive invitations to write the examinations on the 20th of February. Then um, we would also, I beg your pardon, I moved on a bit too fast. Um, we also have the, the announcement of the winners will be on the 17th of March. But we also have a sports and a cultural scholarship open to all and the forms are on the website and must be submitted by the 15th of February. And then lastly, a little note about the final deposits. Final deposits to secure your place for next year need to be in on the 25th of March. Now that is a decision, that's a date decided on and agreed upon by all the girls' schools in Johannesburg. I just want to make a very important point here. Deciding the school, on the school for your daughter is a very important decision. It's not a decision that you want to make in a hurry and it's not a decision you need to be rushed into. Please note that once offers have been made, schools have to keep your place open until the 25th of March, and they cannot offer that place to anyone else before that date. Certainly, if you find that if you've made the decision and once you've made the decision, we all appreciate your letting us know immediately that you've made that decision so that we can offer to someone else. But we do keep that place open until the 25th of March because we do believe that it's important for you to have time to make this important decision 
and we certainly will not put you under any pressure to let us know before that date. Just very quick note on the governance of the school. We do have a trust which is chaired at the moment by Mr. Moss and Guasheng. Um, it is the, the, the role of the trust is purely fiduciary. And then we have a board <clears throat> under the chairmanship of Ms. Audrey Motupi. And there's a list of the board members there. And if you cast your eye over it, you'll see that there's a, a range of different people, great diversity on our board. Um, and there's a great wide range of skills amongst these people and incredibly useful for navigating the complex issues that are involved in independent schools these days. And I find their advice enormously helpful. And then we also have the school executive and you have uh, now met all four of us who are in the school executive in the senior school. Um, and then we have a PTA, Parent Teachers Association. Um, and the, they are very active in organizing opportunities for social interaction within the community. They also organize textbooks for the senior school and they also hold some fundraising events for various projects. The South African Old Rodinian Association, otherwise known as Sayora, is a consists of a very strong and very committed group of women. Uh, they are very loyal to the school. And in fact, it's a, it's a strong, such a strong association that every year when we have our, our annual Foundation Day lunch, which unfortunately we haven't had to, we haven't been able to hold um, last year or this year, but they, the, the old girls come back in their numbers. Um, some of them from 70 years back all the way down to five years back. And it is always wonderful to see them together. Now just a little bit about our history. <clears throat> The picture on the top right shows uh, Rodine Brighton, which was founded in 1885 by the Lawrence family. And the purpose was to offer a good education to women at a time when women were not mostly given such an opportunity. When Johannesburg was a fledgling mining town, the, the um, Lawrence family decided to send their youngest sister, Teresa, out to Johannesburg. Um, and her friend, Catherine Margaret Earl. I believe these two women were incredibly intrepid to come out to a mining, dusty mining town with young women, not knowing really what to expect. But they did have a purpose, and their purpose was to set up a school, a sister school for Rodine in Brighton. Um, and the purpose of that school was similar to the one in Brighton, to, to ensure that women had an education that would give them an equal chance with men. Um, and it, the purpose has not changed. We still have the mission to empower young women to take their rightful place in the world and not to be intimidate, intimidated in a society still dominated by men. We feel that young women who receive an education from Rodine uh, will be able to inspire, to able to lead and inspire lives of significance. Our founding values of truth, honor, freedom and courtesy were chosen by the founders of the school. They're taken from Chaucer's Knight's Tale. And at the time of the, the writing of the Knight's Tale, those values were thought to embody all that was good. We still live by these values. And indeed, girls who attend the school are expected to uphold these values at all times. At a time when life is becoming increasingly complex, I believe that our values are actually more important than ever. And we daily do put a strong emphasis on values. I believe it's something that sets us apart from most other schools. In the middle is an old photograph of the original Herbert Baker building, which still stands to this day. It was opened in 1906. And on this page, you can see it as it looks today from the other side. It's on the right hand side of the photograph. Um, and now joined by a lot of other beautiful old buildings. In fact, we are privileged to have a lot of beautiful historical buildings on our campus. And we do hope that at some time, once COVID numbers have dropped a little, that you will be able to visit them. And our buildings are set in really beautiful gardens. The founders of the school loved gardens and they started the Rodine Gardens. Their legacy continues. And the Rodine Gardens are considered to be amongst the most beautiful gardens in Johannesburg. 
It is really a privilege to work here. When we asked the matrix what it was they enjoyed most about Rodin, they have a lot of things that they that they that they feel were important, but almost every one of them will remark about the Rodin Gardens and what a pleasure it was to live in that, those surroundings or to spend most of their day in those surroundings. As a member of staff, I often stop to survey the gardens and appreciate how lucky I am to work in such a beautiful environment. No presentation about Rodin would be complete without the opportunity to brag about the metric results, which are always outstanding. Unfortunately, the 2020 results are not yet available as the re release was delayed by COVID. And so perhaps a few words about the pandemic and the school's response to it are appropriate right now. When schools closed on Wednesday, the 18th of March, 2020, we had two days to prepare for online teaching. We were in the fortunate position that the Rodin board had had the foresight to invest heavily in IT infrastructure and and also in the training and the use of IT in the classroom. And this had been ongoing. The staff hit the ground running and started delivering excellent and effective online curriculum immediately. Reports from many sources were that Rodine offered the very best online curriculum. Our girls did a lot of comparison with their friends from other schools. And many told us they felt sorry for their friends at other schools who were not receiving the work of the caliber that the Rodine girls received. Many parents wrote to me telling me that they were so enjoying listening to their daughter's online lessons because they were amazed at the standard of the education they were receiving. And many wished they'd had the privilege of having lessons like that. I even had a call from a senior member of the Asasa management team to congratulate us on our excellent online offer. I must confess to having been extremely proud of our teaching staff who always go the extra mile to ensure that their pupils receive the very, very best education that they can deliver. While we were in lockdown, I'm proud to say that our pupils started initiatives to assist less well-resourced communities and organizations. They called it the May Movement. And Buikanyo, who you, speak, her, uh, you heard speaking earlier, was extremely involved in this. She, was, she uh, initiated a drive to collect homemade masks, which could be distributed to our, some of our communities. But they collected not only masks, as indicated in the presentation, but also food, clothing, blankets for COVID patients at the Johannesburg Hospital, and other necessities. They showed that many Rodian pupils are already leading lives of significance. And then we return to campus and to the new normal. And on the right, you see a picture of what our classrooms look like now, not nearly as friendly as they used to. The desks spread far apart, sanitizers at every door, and man masks mandatory for everyone at all times unless they're eating. And more of the new normal. The picture in the middle is a wonderful picture of the fantastic Mr. Bonang Mahale on our speech night last year, giving an elbow bump to one of our prize winners. We were very COVID friendly at that stage and we continue to be COVID friendly. The other photographs are photographs taken this year of our current matric group. Um, on the bottom left, they were all sitting in their um, induction assembly, uh, which we held last week to induct our new leadership. And then they were, the other photographs were taken on Bear's lawn. It's an area of the school which is, it's a matric privilege to be on that lawn and the younger girls are not allowed on there unless they're accompanied by a teacher. While I'm not able to brag about the 2020 matric results as a consequence of COVID, because they will be released only on the 19th of February, I will use this, this opportunity to brag shamelessly about our 2019 results. They were no exception to the norm for Rodine and were superb. We had 100% matric matriculation pass and 100% bachelor degree pass. There were 322 distinctions from 79 girls, which is an average of 4.1 distinctions per candidate. I know some people say to me that's a meaningless statistic, but I think it does show, it really does show you the depth of the, of the brilliance of our results. 
Three Rodine girls were ranked in the top 5% of the IEB learners in five or more subjects. They made it onto what is called the commendable list. And three girls were ranked in the top 5% in six or more subjects, with onto what is called the outstanding list. For a relatively small school, to have six girls on those lists is exceptional. 13 Rodian girls were ranked within the top 1% of IB learners in one or more of the following subjects. You can see there's a really nice range of subjects there. Uh, just as a matter of explanation, FAL stands for first additional language and SAL stands for second additional language. The following girls achieved this particular honor in two or more subjects. And on the right is a list of subjects in which at Rodin, 50% or more of the candidates in 2019 achieved distinctions. That is quite phenomenal to achieve more than 50% of your entries as distinctions in so many subjects is not something that happens easily. And our pupils are readily admitted to excellent local universities and the universities of choice at the moment do seem to be UCT, Stellenbosch, Witz and, and the University of Pretoria. This slide shows only a selection of the universities and colleges to which our pupils have been admitted over the past few years. Over the past 13 years that I've been on the school EXCO, I have filled in a significant number of applications for overseas universities and every single one of the candidates for whom I've filled in um, applications has had been offered at least one, a place at at least one university of her choice, many of them more than one. I have a lovely anecdote to tell. Some years back, when the, there was a new head going to be installed at, at um, our sister school in, in, in Brighton, um, she was sent by the board of, of Bright, uh, Rod Rodine in Brighton to tour educational institutions around the world. Um, and one of her stop off points was, of course, Rodine in South Africa. But she came to us en route from America. And she'd been to uh, Boston and she'd visited Harvard. And she was very put out because the registrar had said to her, hmm, Rodine in Brighton. I've never heard of that. We know Rhodey in South Africa. She was very, very miffed by that. But we were delighted. Every second year, Harvard comes to South Africa to market and they always ask to come to Rhodey to, to present to our, our senior students. And St Andrews in Scotland also asks almost uh, pretty much on every second year to come and uh, to present at Rhodey because they have um, a lot of our really good students have gone to those universities. So the short message is a good IEB matric from Rodin is a ticket to studying anywhere in the world. And very importantly, not only do our girls get accepted, but they fare very, very well. Many of you will know the Alan Gray Orbis Foundation and one of their um, projects is the, is the uh, fellowship program. It's a very prestigious achievement to be to be offered a fellowship and the um, there's a very vigorous, very rigorous and thorough selection process for very, very few places each year. The number of Rodian pupils who have been awarded this very select fellowship indicates the caliber of our pupils. Then there's also the Jacks Carvel Fellowship, which is also um, an Alan Gray Orbis Foundation project. Um, it is to develop excellent teachers. And Hannah Goldblatt, one of our matrix from 2018, was an early recipient of this fellowship. Our Olympiads also provide an indication of our academic success. We are very proud if we have a look there <clears throat> that last year we had Yufei Gao who reached the, the top 100 in the country. In the English Olympiad, we had Zara Kuchuk and Z Rita Zifal who received diamond awards in the English Olympiad. In other words, they were in the top 100 of the Olympiad contestants. Linda's Malherba currently in matric came first in Gauteng in the Afrikaans home language Olympiad and was placed fourth in fourth position nationally. Amelie Nivot and Aidan Irwin were both placed in the top 20 nationally. Nortando Danti 
came first nationally in the Isizulu Olympiad, and Mbali Kuzwayo came fifth nationally. We are extremely proud of these girls for their achievements. Now, it's absolutely impossible to achieve this without a staff of world-class teachers committed to doing the very best. They are a very stable group of people, very experienced staff. There's a very small turnover of staff at Rodin. Perhaps it's the beauty of the gardens. Perhaps it's the strong camaraderie between the staff. Perhaps it's the quaint traditions. But the staff like to stay at Rodin, and hence we have very experienced teachers. Many of them are on the marking committees for the IEB and have many, many ex years of experience in this important task. I must make mention of Mrs. Marge Brown, who's the head of the history department at Rodin. In 2018, she was nominated for the Varki Foundation Global Teachers Award. And out of 30,000 applicants from 53 countries, she was shortlisted in the top 10, which makes her now a Varki teacher ambassador. Fortunately for Rodine, Mrs. Brown continues her association with the, the Varki Foundation teachers, and she's involved in research pro has been involved in research programs since her nomination, and in organizing conferences with other ambassadors from Africa. She has many global connections as a result of this, and therefore we are offered many opportunities for collaborative work with students from around the world. Last year, we were able to connect virtually with schools all over the world on our Round Square Day through her contacts, and we were discussed initiatives being undertaken there, and then were able to explain initiatives undertaken at Rodin. It was a wonderful opportunity for collaboration. Mrs. Brown is also the president of the SA Association of History Teachers. And then Dr. Zonja van der Leer, who is our HOD of Thinking Skills, she is a member of the organizing committee for 2020 ICOT, which is the International Conference on Thinking. Now, you may well ask me why I'm talking about the 2020 ICOT conference. Well, the 2020 ICOT conference, which was um, scheduled to be hosted in Africa for the fir first time, um, an ICOT conference would be in Africa and was to showcase to the world the thinking in an African context and its contribution to shaping the progress of societies around the world. We were enormously excited about it taking place in South Africa, and most of the speakers would have been drawn from South Africa or from the, the, the African continent, as well as some speakers from the rest of the world. But it is we are very proud to have Ms. Dr. van der Leer involved in this initiative. Although it is, did not take place last year, it will be postponed to 2022, and we uh, hope that Dr. van der Leer will continue to be involved. Pictured on the left, she was she was on the TEDx um, stage, as you can see, because she was asked to give a TED talk on thinking skills in the South African context, which she delivered with a plum. Another thing that really assists our academic prowess is the, the, the support structures that we put in place. As mentioned earlier, one of the perceptions is that Rodin accepts only strong academics. And as a school, we provide excellent support for those who need it, both academic and other. And in fact, I get perhaps when the matric results come out, I probably get the greatest pleasure, and I think the rest of the staff do too, when we see how girls who've, who've struggled and have really found academics at school at an uphill battle. But we've provided the support, we've provided a lot of help and encouragement, and it is absolutely wonderful to see them reach their reach their goals and come out with a BD pass when when they entered they did not truly believe that they would get there. We also have two full time psychologists as Mrs Natali mentioned earlier who assist not only with academic and study techniques but also with emotional issues. They are there to help the girls who, when they are needed. We offer a lot of ex extra lessons in the afternoons and of course no one can underestimate the importance of parent support, and so we thank you for that. Academics are a strength, but these are only one facet of a well-rounded individual. It takes much more to inspire lives of significance. There are many opportunities for having fun together, especially during a non-COVID year. 
Our pastoral care system is, is based on, on the house system, and we have three houses. Officially, it is St. Ursula's, St. Catherine's, and St. Agnes, but they are fondly known as bears, cats, and lambs. And I think the girls often forget the real names, but they certainly have a lot of fun at house events. We have many, many house events. Swimming, as is shown here in the pictures, but also all the other sports, we have music, inter-house music, inter-house dance, inter-house plays. One of my favorites is house nights, where girls get to dress and staff get to dress up according to a theme. They eat and they have fun together. They put on skits for one another. Even the staff get dressed up, go on the stage and make fools of themselves. And then we all get together and sing the quirky songs. It is an evening of just great, great fun and gay abandonment. Every year at Foundation Day, the old girls return in their numbers, as I mentioned earlier, with ages ranging from about 90 to the present. And together they sing the very quaint but wonderful school songs. And this forms a bond, which others who have not sung the songs find hard to comprehend. Most girls will say that taking part in house events was the time that they had the most fun and built the closest bonds with their friends. We also have camps. Unfortunately, of course, in COVID years, we can't hold camps, but we will, of course, revert to these as soon as we can. They are really, really important because they help to build relationships and also to develop leadership and teamwork skills, and of course, uh, physical skills as well. Rodine offers a huge number of cultural activities. Music and drama are very strong. We have, as I mentioned earlier, both inter-house plays and a school production each year and inter-house dance. All these develop amazing skills and they are a source of great fun. Each year when I watch the productions, which the girls often write and then direct themselves for house plays, I am blown away by the talent they demonstrate. As a scientist by training, I am in awe of the incredible creativity and innovation shown in the field of drama. Pre-COVID, we would have invited all prospective grade eight pupils and their parents into our, into our hall on open day to listen to a musical program involving our school orchestra or jazz band, and of course, our world renowned choir those of you who logged on a little earlier would have heard our, our choir singing um, as an introduction. I imagine that most of you will have heard the Rodian Choir's lockdown version of Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, which went viral within a few days of its release. For those who have not yet heard it, or who, like me, can watch it time and time again and still enjoy it, we will play out with that at the end of this presentation. So that gives you something to look forward to. Music is very strong at Rodine, and many girls take lessons in music. We offer many opportunities for them to showcase their talents. And once again, I confess to being in awe of the tremendous talent that they display. We also have a lot of clubs and societies. So you can see we have debating and not just the sort of traditional debating, but we also have MUN or Model UN debating. Public speaking, we have an, a very strong eco club. We hold confirmation classes. We have a strong interact group, a glee club, which is a singing group, a photography club. We have an e-sports club, first aid, chess club, an animation club and a book club. Our debating has been enormously successful. Unfortunately, not many competitions took, took, were held last year, but in 2019, we saw extraordinary success. Ella Morrison, who's pictured on the right in her green South African blazer, please notice the South African ba um, uh, pocket badge that she has, was selected to represent South Africa at the World Schools Debating Competition, which was held in Thailand. And three of our deba debaters, Yufei Gao, Zara Kuchuk, and Ella Morrison, participated in the National Schools Debating Competition in December last, uh, at the end of 2019. And they achieved the following honors. Ella was ranked as the best debater in the country. 
and she was selected to trial again for the South African national debating team. Yufei ranked third in the div junior division and her team participated in the final competition. And she was also selected to trial for the SA junior team. And Zara ranked fifth in the junior division and was also selected to trial for the SA junior team. Debating is alive and well at Rodin. And then on to the Model United Nations debating. This is also very strong at Rodin. The oratory and research skills that are learned through this activity are remarkable. It is run by Mrs. Marge Brown, who's passionate about this activity and sure ensures that the girls have many and varied opportunities for taking part. And so if you look at the at the slide, we have Almaz Mudali and Rachel Guys Brown, who participated in the Youth Climate Action Plan open discussion with the Minister of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries, Barbara Creasy. Youth from all over South Africa met virtu virtually and the session was facilitated by the SAIIA at Wits University. Participants had the opportunity to express their concerns about South Africa's response to climate change against the backdrop, backdrop of a COVID-19 crisis. And it was wonderful that that message actually went directly to the minister. And then Beatrice Wharton Hood, Zoya Mutupi Zajas, and Ulmaz Madali participated in the Gauteng Legislature MUN debate. The pupils provided a positioning paper on what the youth believes is vital for the future after COVID-19. And their document has been submitted to the Gauteng Legislature and the Gauteng Department of Education. Public speaking is also strong at Rodine. Our teams compete most effectively. You will recognize Ella here. Ella was in matric last year, won the individual speaking trophy section, and our teams did exceptionally well as well in the public speaking finals. We were runners up in the open section for best overall results and runners up in the impromptu section for the best overall results. We're also very proud of our two current matric pupils who've represented the country in two other cultural activities, Sonia Modi in chess, and Sanjika Senaratni in first aid. Quite something to represent your country in these fields. And then of course we offer sport at Rodin. And the list of sports that we offer, diving, equestrian, hockey, netball, rag, which means Rodin active girl, and that is, is marvellous for those girls who don't really want to be in a team or devote themselves to one sport, but they want to be active. RAG involves the offering different activities each week. It might be yoga one week and perhaps boxing the following week. And then the third week might be self-defence. And these activities are enormously popular with the girls who are not team players. Now, I do want to address an urban rumour. And that urban rumour is that Rodine is not a sporting school. The perception is that we, by, by many, is that we partake in sport, but we are really not competitive. And what I hope to do in the next few slides is to, to dispel that rumour. In 2020, we had 20 provincial and national water polo representatives from a school, a senior school of only 400 pupils. That is an amazing achievement. We also had provincial representation from Rodin for other sports. So we had two provincial, uh, two provincial representatives in diving, Tendwa Chibafa and Zuluntu Khadebe. In squash, Caitlin Poole and Megan Stoger. In swimming, Romy Day, Sasha Peche and Tumelo Telejani. Hayley Swin represented the school, represented the province in tennis. And then national representation in water polo. Gio Alassia, Julia Quaker, Margot Kemp and Zara Bodiat were selected to participate in the EU Nations Junior Women's Water Polo Cup last year. And then, uh, and Zoya was selected as a non-travelling reserve. But I do want to make special mention of Zoya, who's pictured on the far left because she's not only been chosen to represent the country in water polo, but she also has represented South Africa in skiing when she was in her grade 10 year. 
I hope that I've convinced you that the perception that Rodine is not a com competitive on the sports front is just that, a perception, and definitely not a reality. Ah, and I almost forgot. Water polo selection camp that has just been announced. Z Boati Motau, who was in matric last year, and Zara Bodiat, who's currently in matric, have been selected for the national squad and training camp to take place in Durban later this month. The objective of this camp is to select an inclusive ladies squad for the Olympic Games in 2021 and to develop a long term squad for the Olympic Games in 2024. We are very, very proud indeed of Boati and Zara's uh, prowess at water polo. And now we move on to our teaching and other facilities and starting with boarding and Lietle gave you a wonderful introduction to what it's like to be in boarding. And so I don't think I need to say much more. But in the bottom right hand corner, you will see the outside out of, of the, the boarding house. It really is a beautiful building designed to fit in with our heritage buildings, but it is very modern inside, very comfortable. Our previous one of our previous heads said it was rather like living in a hotel. Um, and it certainly is a very, very comfortable accommodation. As Lithia mentioned, it provides opportunities to form strong and long lasting bonds. We offer both weekly and termly boarding, and we do have quite a lot of girls in to, who, who come for weekly boarding because they find that it saves so much time not having to go backwards and forwards from school each day. And this provides them with the opportunity to do so much more in their day. Because we offer boarding, we attract girls from other countries, and this adds a richness to the school. One other facility worth mentioning and not pictured here is the bridge between Rodine and St. John's. So for those parents who have sons at St. John's, it's enormously um, convenient. More of our facilities. We do have some really, really beautiful old buildings, old heritage buildings. The main picture here shows our girls in the school chapel and down at the bottom some pictures of girls in our beautiful library, which is a marvelous room with lots of wood paneling and wood, wood shel wooden shelving. But also up to the right, you'll see that some of our buildings are very modern and we've had architects who've been very clever in, in blending the two, the modern with the old. The contrasts make the campus very interesting and very special. More facilities, our round square amphitheater, which is relatively new, our art room, our science labs. Our science labs are really wonderful and quite state of the art. At this stage, if you've visited other schools and many of you will have, you might find yourself saying, yes, you know, all schools have great facilities and they have good results. So what is it that Rodine offers that makes the school different? And so I'd like to speak to you briefly about some of our recent strategic initiatives. They are not all unique, but I do believe that the combination probably is and that the combination is a very striking one. So in starting in 20, 2008, the school underwent a very detailed and long strategic planning exercise that is summed up in this triangle. And I don't want to take you through all the detail in the triangle, but this is where it is all housed. Um, and I would like to speak first about three particular aspects of the strategy that took us up to 2019, because those are, are still exist and we still work at them and, and, and maintain them. And I think it's worth your knowing uh, what, what about those. And then I'll move on to the subsequent changes that we've made since 2019. So first, the, the, the three strategic focus that I would like to, to comment on that we focused on until 2016 and then strengthened until 2019 are our focus on maths and sciences, our focus on IT, and then our cognitive skills program. Now, when I mention the maths and sciences focus, I do want to be clear. We do not mean that we promote these to the detriment of other subjects. We consider all subjects equally important and valuable. This focus on maths and sciences is about empowerment. Society and even girls themselves see themselves as less able than their male counterparts in maths and the sciences. Well, we do not believe this to be true. 
We believe that we need to empower girls who wish to study these subjects and realize that they are just as capable as their male counterparts. Girls wishing to pursue careers in these fields should be encouraged to do so. And in sending that important message, we constructed new facilities, the Rini and Fred England a mathematics center and the new sciences laboratories, which are amongst the best in the world, in the country, I beg your pardon. And these reinforce the message that women are as able to take their places in these fields as men. And there we have some of our girls um, writing on the glass of, of one of the classroom walls, but uh, we have some lovely walls, lovely uh, glass walls in the, in the mathematics center. And they do enjoy doing some working some of their problems out together on the glass walls. Here is the mission written by the maths department after workshopping the concept. Rodin envisions a supportive environment that nurtures in each girl and teacher the capacity to be aware of and celebrate the magic of mathematics in everyday life and which inspires innovative mathematical thinkers, confident that success is rooted in a solid foundation of understanding. We opened our new sciences facilities in 2016 with a strategic aim that our girls can venture confidently into the male dominated world of the sciences. The buildings, the facilities were opened by Sia Kluza, who emphasized that the sciences have no gender and no race. Anyone who's curious about the world around him or her is determined to investigate it and believes that he or she can succeed, has every chance of doing so in this field. Mrs. Polani Kingston, a significant donor to stated that while we reflect on the meaningful strides that have been made in an effort to achieve greater gender equality, the journey ahead remains long and challenging. It is thus our collective responsibility to continue to play an active role in fostering visionary leaders and developing workable and sustainable solutions that will close the gender gap. And here we have Sia standing amongst the girls on the day that he opened the facilities and on the right is our graffiti wall where we encourage the girls to write up anything of interest to them around the sciences and it's interesting because what they've done here is they've combined one of our our thinking skills our thinking strategies which uh, one of our, um, our our habits of mind is finding humor and they've asked the girls to write down anything that is humorous around valentine that involves science so we have some lovely things like, um, are, you are you a red blood cell because you take my oxygen away? And um, you're more su superior than my vena cava. We don't look too carefully at the spelling, but they do have fun writing out their graffiti on the science graffiti wall. Rodin has participated in the WITS integrated experience, um, which integrates sciences and, and other fields since its inception in 2016. In 2016, our team was placed first. In 2017, we had two teams involved and they were placed second and fourth. The team that was involved in 2018 was placed first. And in 2019, the team of girls you see pictured there was placed third. Unfortunately, the, the experience was not hosted in 2020 because of COVID and it may not happen in 2021, but we will certainly take part again when it does. We are exceedingly proud of our young scientists, particularly as they were, as far as I can remember, the only all girls school that participated. And just to emphasize that the focus on maths and sciences is about empowering and is not at the expense of the arts. On the contrary, art and music and design at the school and drama are all very, very strong. And here we have a quote from an IEB examiner who, um, who said that many candidates produced very innovative work indeed, moving from traditional to innovative, non-traditional methods and approaches in very pleasing, successful ways. This is evidence of real imaginative, innovative, creative thinking. So we're very proud to have that kind of comment made about our art department. And in fact, very proud to tell you that in 2019, 100% of the visual arts students 
and 80% of the design students in geometric exams. And here is another, yet another indication of the strength of the art and design at Rodin. Each year, it's of the dance. Now, many of the traditional fashion shows, uh, at, at most of those, the girls source fashion, fashion items from fashion houses and they model those. We do some the highlight of our fashion show every year. Not only do they design the claim models of the Rodian community. The next year, the integrated careers are to use IT in the classroom, but to use it only where it enhanced teaching. So we currently have a new team which is working on updating our 2015 strategy. And I have no doubt that this team will bring fresh new ideas, new and our thinking skills program was from grade naught all the way up to grade 12. It's impossible at this stage. Nobody could possibly know. Furthermore, information is readily available. We need to teach pupils to think creatively and critically and equip them with the tools to evaluate that information that is so readily available. We believe that that should prepare them exceptionally well for the future. Fundamental to the success of any thinking skills program is the belief that intelligence is not fixed and can be developed. Many people, certainly in my day, believe that you had a particular IQ and that was that. We know now that that is not true and that intelligence can be developed. And we certainly aim to do that through our thinking skills program. And tied to the idea of a growth mindset, which moves from fixed to growth mindset and, and, and is, is based on the idea that, that one can improve one's intelligence if one has the right approach. There's, we also have to, um, resilience and adapt adaptability are tied. The overarching th um, strategy that we employ, sorry, I'm just going to have a drink of water. The overarching strategy that we employ is that of Costa and Calic's habits of mind. And these are supported by other strategies, including David Hiley's thinking mats, De Bono's thinking hats, and the Harvard University's thinking routines. And here we have just a lovely graphic of the thinking hats. And here is a brief overview of the value of the program and a history of our accreditation journey to the point where we now have advanced accreditation from grade naught all the way up to matric for the whole school. We received that accreditation last year and are extraordinarily proud of it. Although those strategic initiatives were implemented some time ago, I have referred to them because they do, in combination, set us apart from our competitors and they form the base for our new strategic um, initiatives. And so let us start and take a look then at the four new areas for strategic focus. Oh, I beg your pardon. I rushed ahead. This is just a, a lovely article in the Rosebank Kelani Gazette about our COG -Ed, um, re uh, results and a lovely poster to celebrate our advanced accreditation as a thinking school. And so the four new strategic focus areas are curriculum innovation, leadership, transformation 
and access, and I'll take you briefly through those. So following on nicely from our thinking skills program is our current curriculum innovation. Since there's not much flexibility in grades 10 to 12 because the curriculum is very set, we have focused our efforts on the grades eight on grades eight and nine. We've implemented a modular system to allow greater focus on fewer subjects at any time. And we believe this is better from an educational point of view and also importantly alleviates stress. Because if the girls find that they are then able to focus on fewer subjects at any time. We are aware that it's critical to place emphasis on the mental and emotional well-being of our pupils in these turbulent times. We've also increased our coding content and introduced robotics in an effort to prepare our pupils for the fourth industrial revolution. And in times when ethics seem to be forgotten by many in the wider community, we've introduced a model on ethical thinking. That model has been met with in module, I beg your pardon, has been met with enthusiastic approval by our grade nines. They thoroughly enjoy their ethics classes. In 2022, we hope to introduce some optional modules which will present opportunities for pupils to study subjects not traditionally found in the GET curriculum. We're very excited about these new initiatives and we believe they will prepare our pupils effectively for the future. We also place strong emphasis on leadership at Rodine so that we can inspire our leaders, our, our, our pupils, I beg your pardon, to lead lives of significance. In 2019, we held our um, inaugural leadership summit, which was hugely successful. Our keynote speakers were Rapa Langrebana, who's uh, pictured up on the top left, and an old girl of Rodine and, 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 and an iconic young South African entrepreneur. And also Nunu Nchingila, who is the CEO of Facebook Africa. Both provided wonderful insights into leadership. In addition to those keynote addresses, we also held, held panel discussions and small group conversations around the issues of leadership. The summit in 2020 was fully online and streamed to participants all over the world. Many of our Round Square schools, we invited them all to take part and many of them logged on at the time. We again had wonderful speakers, all world renowned leaders, the Honorable Grassa Michelle, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf and Pumzile Mlambunguka. It was a resounding success and we now look forward with great anticipation to our 2021 summit. Yet another opportunity to develop leadership skills was provided by the T4 Education Week. The purpose was to highlight the Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is equal education for all. Rodine was one of the hundred schools chosen globally to participate in this online event, which was live streamed across the world, and several teachers and students took part. It was a wonderful opportunity we, we did and, and the theme that we worked on was deepening family and community engagement and spoke at great length about our social responsibility and our thinking skills programs. Yet another opportunity to develop leadership skills was provided by um, the Climate Action Project in which Rodine was involved and culminated in an international webinar in November in which five of our MUN debaters participated. Here they are pictured with Mrs. Marge Brown. So we have here um, Rachel Guys Brown, who's currently in matric, uh, Sanjika Senaratni, uh, Almaz Mudali, Beatrice Wartenhood and Zara Ishmael. They acquitted themselves with a plum. We will obviously continue to pursue opportunities such as this to build leadership skills in our pupils. The third of our new strategic focus areas is that of transformation. In 2019, we set up a committee with representatives from all our major stakeholders and including uh, students from the school to develop a strategic plan, a roadmap as it were for transformation. Just as one cannot set out in a car and hope to reach one's destination if one has no idea where you're going, we felt that we needed to know what we were aiming for and how to get there. The committee spent numerous hours in discussion, some of it very difficult, very challenging. 
and during 2020 presented a plan to the board. The plan, which contained goals, objectives and action steps, was accepted by the board in July 2020. And since then, the executive of the school has been systematically implementing the action steps that were agreed upon. One of those has been the implementation of the world renowned Think Equal program designed for very young children, which aims to develop to, to prevent the development of prejudice. We are as a school absolutely committed to zero tolerance for any kind of discrimination. We are determined to create an environment in which every member of our community experiences a deep sense of belonging and comfort, and we will work tirelessly towards that goal. The third of our strategic initiatives, the fourth by bigger pardon is access. I'm not sure how many of you know that certainly a while back at Harvard University, they had a, a, a huge fund that allowed them if there was any student who they felt would benefit from being at Harvard and they really wanted that student to, to go to Harvard, um, finances were never an obstacle to their being there. It is the dream of our board that there would be no financial um, obstacle to any girl who want, wished to come to Rodine and would flourish there. And so the, our aim is to develop a large fund which would allow this so that all girls who, who, who show the potential and, and to flourish here would be able to attend. Obviously, it's, a, it's at the moment, it's a bit of a pipe dream because of the financial situation, but we are certainly not giving up hope. We certainly continue to dream about it, and we have appointed a fundraiser who will start working on this as one of her main objectives. Having covered our strategic initiatives, I feel I must talk now briefly about Round Square and what that brings to Rodine, because it is quite, while we know that some of our competitive schools do offer it, they are not, not all of them do. And I think it's important then to tell you a little bit about it. So Rodine is a member of Round Square. Round Square was started in 1966 by Kurt Hahn, famous for his philosophy, there is more in you than you think. It's a group of 200 like-minded schools in 50 countries which connect and collaborate to offer world-class programs and experiences that develop global competence, character, and confidence in their students. There is a strong focus too on building resilience. The activities are centered around six themes or pillars, and these are internationalism, democracy, environment, adventure, leadership and service. And if you look at the first letters of those six words, you'll see that they spell the word ideals. And so those are the ideals of Round Square. <clears throat> there are 12 discoveries that, are, that build up that, those six ideals. So if we have a look here, down at the bottom, courage and self-awareness together build up the spirit of service. Sustainability and inquisitiveness build up the spirit of environmentalism. Diversity and problem solving, internationalism. Communication and responsibility build democracy. Tenacity and inventiveness, the spirit of adventure. And compassionate, compassion and teamwork, the, the spirit of leadership. And it is a belief that by exploring, exploring these 12 um, discoveries, the girls will grow to reflect the six ideals of Round Square. At Rodine, internationalism is developed through exchanges with other Round Square schools situated elsewhere in the world. And there is a list of some of the schools that these girls pictured in the picture here went to. And the bottom right hand corner is Mrs. Sandy Murray, who runs our Round Square program. Um, these girls spend, girls spend up to three months of their grade 10 year at another school and then they host a student who, who then spends time at Rodine. And this brings great richness to the community and life experience to the individual students. It's also fostered through our model United Nations debating, which I've already mentioned at some length, and also through the international and regional round square conferences that our girls do attend in non-COVID years. And there are some pictures of girls on some of those conferences. 
uh, during 2020, when exchanges were no longer uh, possible, the idea of virtual virtual uh, postcards became popular with the girls. And this this postcard, which is pictured on the screen, is the one which the Rodine pupils developed towards the end of last year, 4th of November, to showcase South Africa and some of the important features of South Africa. And I think you can see it's really rather beautiful. And I believe that the that the, that the interaction, they then interacted with students from all over the world and explained to them, took them through this postcard and what it means to be South African. So that was truly a, a wonderful experience. And, and the girls thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly enjoyed interacting with other students from all over the world. Of course, school tours are another way one can develop internationalism. But again, in 2020 and in 2021, we're not going to see those. However, we will, um, as soon as they are possible again, revive that particular activity. Our second ideal is democracy. And democracy is encouraged through our Students' Representative Council. And I think Wekanyo gave us a, a beautiful a, a description of how that is how that is done, how democracy is, is upheld within the SRC. And secondly, through our debating society, because um, they also they discuss issues of great importance. Um, and as mentioned earlier, they are an exceedingly successful society. The third in, in ideal is of that of environment, which is supported mostly by our eco club. Um, they're very, very active. They organize activities and promote education around environmental issues. Rodian pupils go during non-COVID times to the Siakana Food Garden, where they assist in the growing of organic food, which is then sold to provide income for the workers of the garden. So there's also a social responsibility aspect to this program. Adventure, the fourth of the, of the ideals, is, is promoted in conjunction with the President's Award and through rock climbing. We, our President's Award is very active at Rodine and many, many, many of our girls get to the gold level. And then leadership is the fifth of the, of the, of the ideals. And Rodine provides many opportunities for pupils to test and to develop their leadership skills, both in matric through, for example, prefects and, um, and matrics themselves lead, the round square board, the, the um, Students' Representative Council, they act as sports captains and they act as heads of cultural activities. But also in before matric, they get opportunities in order to do this. So there is, there are SRC representatives in grades 8 to 11. They can be on the Social Responsibility Board from grade 8 to 12. The matric dance committee is a, a grade 11 activity and pictured on the right are some of the girls from a year back or a year or two back in their beautiful dresses. And then there's the cognitive education drive team, which involves grade eight, grade nine and 10 pupils. And then lastly, the interact board, which, um, which is run by grade 11s. So there are many, many activities. And of course, the, the girls leadership summit, which is open to all. Last but definitely not least is the ideal of service. And our social responsibility at Rodine really is very, very strong. Here are some of the posters created by our pupils to promote involvement in the May movement, which took place during lockdown. But our program is very, very, com very complex and, and, and very sophisticated. We do not believe simply in charity, but on building sustainable and reciprocal relationships with several partner organizations so that our pupils learn from the experience of interacting with others less fortunate than themselves. And in our video, you saw some, some more information around that. Now, in order to be access, successful in life, it's generally accepted that one needs to have a fairly high intelligence quotient or IQ. While there's been a great debate over many years regarding the value of an IQ test, and the definition of IQ has been subject of much discussion for decades, most parents will expect that by sending their child to school, their child's intelligence will be developed so that she can take her place in the world of work and beyond. In the 1990s, the concept of EQ was defined, and over the years, it has become accepted that the ability to interact well and empathetically with others is also an important determinant of success. In the past few years, and particularly last year, when ability to change suddenly and often became a necessity, 
the concept of AQ or adaptability quotient has risen to the fore, with many believing strongly that AQ will, in the uncertain future which we all face, be the most important factor in determining success. Solving the problems faced by the world and living lives of significance will require more than just academic ability. It will require people with diplomacy and great emotional intelligence, creators, designers, entrepreneurs and innovators, people with grit and determination, people who can work effectively in teams, and many more. These people possess skills and traits that cannot be developed by a purely academic program. They require character and resilience and the ability to adapt quickly and effectively in changing circumstances. In the early part of my presentation, I showed you how Rodin has effectively put in place processes which support the development of every pupil's intelligence. Through our exceptional world-class teaching and our accredited cognitive education program, we are proud to say that Rodin produces young women who stand out as intelligent, as highly capable intellectually, and as creative, critical, and reflective thinkers. Through our cultural, sporting, Round Square, President's Award, Transformation and Social Responsibility Initiatives, as well as our Thinking Skills Program, which encourages empathy and ethical thinking. We provide many opportunities for our pupils to develop strong EQ. They learn to appreciate and to understand one another better. I'm pleased to tell you as the most important attribute sought by business more and more often becomes that of AQ, that we at Rodin have been deliberately developing AQ as well. Our, our emphasis over the past few years on developing a growth mindset means that Rodin pupils are equipped and ready for change and that they should be able to navigate the exponential changes in life with aplomb and in doing so, lead lives of significance in the future. In closing, I would like to say that if you are looking for a school that will provide numerous opportunities for your daughter to develop her IQ, her EQ and her AQ so that she is sought after by tertiary institutions, both here and abroad, and is able to make her mark on the world, I suggest you look no further than Rodine. You have already found the ideal school. Thank you. We are now ready to answer any questions which have been placed in the Q&A section. But before we do that, um, I would like to introduce to you the chair of our board who has joined us now to assist in answering any questions that you may have. Um, so I would like to introduce Ms. Audrey Motupi and thank her very much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Fiona. Thank you, Fiona. Right, and so now I think we need to look and see whether there are any questions. Um, okay. The first question, has Rodine considered opening an online school too? Some private schools have opened new online schools in the country. So I, I will start answering that and Ms. Matupi may uh, wish to pick up on that as well. We certainly have given a good deal of consideration to it. Um, we have looked at it both from a financial point of view and logistically from the stress levels that our staff were experiencing last year with, with lockdown. And we decided that we wouldn't join the crowds and immediately rush into this, but that we would give it very serious consideration. It's certainly something that's on the table, but it's not something that we have as yet made a decision on. But perhaps Ms. Matupi would like to, to pick up on that. Thanks, Fiona. Thanks, Fiona. I'm not sure I've got an echo, sure, but, an echo, but it's actually a good one because we discussed it at the board uh, throughout the year. And I think it's important to note that it's something that 
as you've heard from Fiona, the, the issue around evolving our curriculum continues to be top of mind. And interesting enough, discussions around online or innovative ways of providing an education platform started way before COVID. And, and was, we should commend our strategy around IT. By the time we got hit by school closures, our staff and our technology was up and running within those two, three days uh, that we needed to. So it's something that is top of mind. Um, Fiona's point around not jumping into it immediately is to answer your question. No, it's not going to happen this year immediately, but it's not something that's not on the agenda. We recognize the importance of the future and aligning with the future and in the future, the duality of both face to face and online will be a reality, has become a reality elsewhere. And for me, a really telling point was when the Ivy League institutions embraced it uh, after years of of talking about the importance of the purity of a face-to-face -face education. So the answer is um, it, it's yes and no, not right now, but definitely still something that we would consider and not off the table. Um, there's another question. Do we have AP Maths? We most certainly offer AP Maths. We also offer um, AP English. And we have in the last couple of years had girls writing AP Afrikaans. AP Physics is on the table. Um, it has, it's recently been offered by the IEB, but we've had very low uptake um, uh, thus far, um, but we're certainly not ruling it out as a possible subject for girls to take. I can't see any more questions, but I don't know if there are any more. Um, I don't know if someone on the technical side would like to add to that, Ms. Matupi. I see there's a question around the feeder schools up that you mentioned earlier. So there's an advocate CEO would like us to share more info regarding the feeder schools that you referred to in the beginning of your slides. We have some traditional feeder schools. So, for example, Apps and Catherine's Jan Salia and, and Parkview, uh, the Parkview Senior School are some of our more traditional feeder schools. But in fact, there's these days we have a very, very wide variety of schools of, of junior schools who, who feed into Rodine. And obviously we give equal consideration to every application. Um, I don't know. I can't unfortunately see any more of the questions. Are there more there, Audrey? There yeah. are no more, no more questions, Mrs. Rogers. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Natali. I don't know. Ms. Matupi, if you would like to say anything before we close. I think just to say, I think it's exciting. It's uh, different times uh, for every single uh, aspiring new parent. Um, I think the one thing we forget that all of us as parents when we're making choices about any new setting for our boys and girls, it's quite a daunting decision. And I was actually, Mrs. Mrs. Rogers, I was reminded listening to your presentation of the conversation we had about uh, just making decisions around children. I'm one of those parents whose daughter came into uh, junior school grade five and then came into the senior school with a lot of changes um, and that has been a journey. Everything you've mentioned, everything, the perceptions around not being a sporting environment, the perceptions around only the academics. I've seen the joys um, of the matric years when we had students who really had struggled in the support structures. I've got examples of teachers who went out of their way weekend after weekend and supported girls through matric uh, two, three, four weeks before and got them to get some really fantastic results. I think in closing, what you couldn't say, which I can say, is that truly the power of the staff at Rodin is uh, second to none. Uh, you produce amazing goals because of the commitment and passion of every single one of you that you've got. And more important, just the, the diversity of thought, the di uh, diversity of leadership and that permeates in the goals. If you look at the activities you've shown through uh, where you've got all the teams working together, that is so Rodine, as speaking as a parent and not just as a chair of the board, it's something that's, that's to be commended. And then finally, if you look at the journey ahead um, on all the strategic points that you put forward, um, are we co constantly as a board are thankful that we have the Rodine staff and that we have the quality of parents 
uh, 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 one thing we didn't put out in the presentation is what also makes Rodine is actually the quality of parents that come on board. It is an ecosystem that's made up of stakeholders, not just from our teachers and our students, but our parents, our old girls, the old girl community is very strong. Um, and once once you hit Rodine and walk through that gate, uh, you never stop being a Rodinian, no matter what. And that I've seen in a difficult year as we've gone through in 2020 with a lot of changes covered, uh, the challenges that we had globally, uh, the power of the collective came to the true test and, and with the old girls who took out their time to be part of the processes, uh, the support of our own girls across all grades, including the, the little ease. Uh, we talk about coming to high school, but if you look at what we do in the junior school in St. Margaret's, all comes and comes to play together into one. And the, the motto that I have continued to raise over and over is hashtag one Rodine is a reality and hashtag one Rodine through humility and the values that are put forward uh, comes to play even in the most difficult moments that any of your daughters would have to go through. So thank you. And I thank hope you. to see you. Thank, yes, we hope to see, we definitely do. Thank you so much, Audrey, for that. And I'd just like to end by saying thank you to all the parents who've made an application to Rodine. I hope that this presentation has given you an insight into why our pupils are sought after by universities both here and abroad, and why so many of them leave their mark on the world in so many ways. And also why they have a really happy, for most of them, a very happy journey through the school. I hope you enjoy the rest of the evening and we look forward to meeting you in person when we can welcome you at Rodine. Please remember that if you would like to have a tour, all you need to do is contact Ms. Mrs. Shelver and she will try to organize a tour for you at a time that is suitable. And if your daughter would like to spend some time here in classes at Rodine, we will also look to trying to organize that for you because we know that that all helps in making this difficult and important decision that you're going to have to make. And so we'll now play out with our absolutely marvelous video sung by our world renowned choir of Hallelujah. And thank you very much and good evening. Thank you. Secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do ya? Well, it goes like this the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift, the baffled king composed. Baby.